Republican Senator Josh Hawley has introduced a bill that would ban members of Congress from trading and owning stocks. Oh, oh okay, interesting. Uh, now, on Tuesday, Hawley introduced the Preventing Elected Leaders from Owning Securities and Investment Act, also known as the Pelosi Act. Uh, okay, I, I can't help but uh, enjoy that. <laughs> Look, I don't like Josh Hawley. I'll be very clear about that. I don't trust Josh Hawley. I know this bill is going to fail. Too many members of Congress trade, uh, trade stocks. I get it. I still actually like the bill. <laughs> on, its, on, on its face, on its own, I would have no problem with this bill. If Alexander Ocasio-Cortez comes out with the same bill, what would, I mean, it wouldn't be any different, right? It wouldn't be. So it's, again, it's a good piece of legislation. Again, it would ban lawmakers and their spouses from holding stocks or making new transactions while in office. Simple as that. Again, a good proposal. And by the way, naming it after Pelosi, not a bad touch. Uh, and look, it, it's because I'm not exactly a huge fan of Nancy Pelosi either. Now, not because of the weirdo reasons that right-wingers don't like Nancy Pelosi. Like, you normally hear, like, crazy crap about her. No, no, no. It, I just don't, I, she's just, I'm not a big fan of her because she's a corporate Democrat. And I generally don't really like corporate Democrats. And there's a reason. Corporate Democrats, just like corporate Republicans, will put the needs of corporations and big business and wealthy people over the needs of their constituents. That's the only reason. And again, I understand that it's an unpopular opinion among Democrats to like criticize other Democrats, especially Nancy Pelosi. But I just want to let you know that Nancy Pelosi, I'm sorry, she's just not looking out for you. A lot of these corporate Democrats aren't. And look, she doesn't believe in Medicare for all, which would save, you know, look, thousands, tens of thousands of lives per year because people would actually be able to afford healthcare coverage because healthcare would be free in this country and it would actually save money over the long run. She doesn't want to ban congressional stock trades. And look, the reason is, is because members of Congress, both Democrats and Republicans, end up putting their own financial interests over the interests of their constituents because of those stock trades. Also, since they also have insider information. Again, this happens on both sides of the aisle. The majority of our legislators are beholden to corporate donors, thanks to our legalized system of bribery, money in politics, and again, the ability to uh, be able to, uh, you know, trade stocks. Now, as far as Pelosi, it, it's not just like good, you know, good politics if you're a right winger, because let's be honest, there's almost no one that is more hated and vilified on the right wing than Pelosi. But again, it's for weirdo right wing reasons and not like, oh, she takes money from corporations and isn't progressive. No, no, they like that she takes money from corporations. They just hate her because she's Nancy Pelosi. She's really good at uh, uh, just. Let me tell you what, <laughs> her being a woman is enough for right-wingers to flip their shit, okay? Just, and, and a woman in power, by the way. And so, yeah, sexism is a huge part of why conservatives hate Nancy Pelosi, whereas progressives don't like Nancy Pelosi because, again, there is that, hey, she takes money from corporations, doesn't look out for us, she sides with corporate donors, et cetera, et cetera. And so, look, understand that the reasons here are different that progressives are not in favor of people like Nancy Pelosi or corporate Democrats um, compared to right-wingers. So that said, Nancy Pelosi specifically pointed out uh, because uh, last year, Pelosi's husband, Paul Pelosi, by the way, was a, a victim of a, a vicious attack. Uh, and nobody here condones that attack. It's horrible or the conspiracy theories surrounding that attack. Even so, I got to point out that he was doing congressional stock trades. 
Now, he's uh, uh, obviously the husband of Nancy Pelosi, and so could be able to get insider information to make these stock trades that have made both of them incredibly wealthy. He sold millions of dollars just recently of shares of computer uh, chip maker NVIDIA as the House had prepared to vote on a bill focused on domestic chip manufacturing. Now, truth out does note that the financial disclosure filed by Pelosi says that her husband sold the shares at a loss. Hmm, interesting. And that's an unusual thing for the lawmaker to note on a disclosure statement, so it raises a couple of weird red flags. Now, the publication also finds that thanks in part to her husband's tradings, Nancy Pelosi is worth about $46 million. Other publications, however, estimate the couple's net worth to be upwards of $171 million. She is incredibly wealthy. It should also be noted that NVIDIA was one of the biggest gainers after the chips bill cleared in its procedural vote, gaining a lot of value in the stock market. Now, the other thing, and as I mentioned this before, Nancy Pelosi had originally blocked bipartisan bills to try to ban congressional stock trades. In fact, she said she had opposed the proposal because you, the U.S. is, quote, a free market economy and says that members in Congress should be able to participate in that. A month later, she made a slight shift to her position and said that while she doesn't buy into it, she would be open to passing a ban if members wanted to. Well, Nancy Pelosi should be more concerned about what her constituents wanted to do. Polls have consistently found majority support for ending congressional stock trades. You should care more about that. Upwards of 70% of likely voters say that they support efforts to ban Congress from trading individual stocks, and 68% support also banning members' spouses from the pack practice. Take, uh, you know, she should have been able to take that slam dunk and at least put it on the floor. She didn't want to because it would impact her bottom line. That's what I'm talking about here. That said, do I trust Josh Hawley? No, <laughs> of course not. No, this is posturing. That's what it is. Remember, Josh Hawley's whole thing is to try, oh, look at me, I'm a populist. I care about uh, average things. No, what you're doing is you're looking at polls and you're seeing like, oh, oh, it looks like, uh, uh, you know, the average American uh, really hates it uh, when uh, Congress does shady things and, and makes money off congressional stock trades. Ooh, well, I, I think I'll uh, posture myself by uh, introducing a bill that I know is going to fail. And that's essentially all it is. He knows it's never going to pass. He knows there are too many corrupt members of Congress that are going to, you know, vote against any effort to stop them from making money up the stock market, them and their families, especially now that Republicans control the House. There are definitely more than enough people in both parties who are going to take this bill. And again, don't forget the Senate, if it ever did manage to pass the House, and again, there are different members that do support this from both parties, you still have to go through the Senate. And the Senate is where legislation goes to die, because remember, there is a filibuster. Senate Republicans will never allow it to get through. And I'm sure you would also probably have defections from the Democratic side, like, uh, for example, just one Joe Manchin, but you also have... Uh, probably Tom Carper, Chris Coons, etc. You know, the, the, the average corporate Democrats. That said, it's good marketing, it's good politics. This, this is playing populist. And it is something that more Democrats should do. If they wanted to, it's right there. Letting Josh Hawley come through, and once again, this is like the third time he's introduced a bill like this, why are you letting him do it? Why, why are uh, people, why are Democrats not, you know, uh, allowing Democrat, uh, allowing, sorry, Republicans to come and introduce these things that are in intensely popular? You're allowing these people who are, of course, not on the side of the average person to cultivate an image that they are. A false image. That said, 
if it ever did have a chance to pass, oh, of course I'd support 100%. At the end of the day, it makes sense. Yes, members of Congress should not be able to allow, uh, be allowed to trade individual stocks in the stock market. It's an insane system that we have that allows them to do so. But of course, the fact that it makes sense is exactly the reason why it would never pass, at least not in this corrupt system. 